All right, g'day there. Richard Musgrave Evans here again, and welcome back. Now, I'm back on the river. I'm gonna do something a little different this time. I've really zoomed in, so if you have a look at the uh, bank on the other side there, you'll see a nice gum tree and whatever. What I'm doing here is almost like a zoomed in view. I wanna really concentrate on just that area, so hence the whole closeness. Grab a bit of paper towel. All right, so I've already blocked in a bit. I just felt like I wanted to get started and just sort of warm up, but now, got the concept in my head I know exactly what I want to do so let's get into it it's a bit of a bit of a funny old day today there's a it started off full sun and uh, there's a fair bit of cloud kicking in as well so we'll see what happens all right so there we go got the gum tree here got the essential darks what's next I'd say let's start getting probably start getting some of that water in uh, I might just put the, uh, okay, I know what I'll do. I'll just mix up some ultramarine blue and magenta. I've got a bit of white on the knife already, so that's already there. So we've got magenta, ultramarine blue, and white. Quite a pale color, and that's just, let's put a bit of that in. bit more red, so I'm going a little bit more, hang on, putting a bit more magenta. Bit of a breeze here now, I'll tell you what, I, I've been spoiled. I've definitely been spoiled over the last day. Now Viridian Green with some magenta. Just trying to put some distant type of tones in here, so I've got with the blues, I'm going magenta and viridian green as well. Now sort of feeling my way. Right. It's not gonna to be too much here. So I'm just putting the undertones of these shadows in. Very lightly scraping in. It's not going to be too much about a lot of distance, it's more about the foreground here. So I'll stand back and just see if I've got the composition going. Okay, so we've got those shadows in. Now what I might do is mix up a bit of that beautiful watercolour. So, Viridian greens and yellow ochres and burnt siennas. There's a bit of stuff on the palette from yesterday here and that'll sort of come in handy right now, I guess. Yeah, that's about it. Let's just put that on. Yellow ochres, viridian greens, burnt siennas, bits of those white that are already there, slap them in. Yellow ochres. Now I just gotta work out what I'm gonna do there. I can't see that. Uh -huh. Yep. That green that burnt that green that I've just made there wasn't warm enough, so I've added a bit more burnt sienna, a bit more yellow ochre, so it's got a little bit of less viridian green, obviously. That's more like it. All right, let's get that in. Gonna have to mix up a bit more of a brew. Oh, cheap as flicking paint around. <laughs> palette knife just got caught. That'd be interesting to see that in slow motion. Got caught on the palette and then flick. There's a bit of paint there. That's all right, that's fine. All right. I just want to get this paint on and not muck around about it. It's important to get it up to the edges so it looks all lovely. It's 
It's going to go through quite a bit of that colour, so I better make up a bit more. Got some paint from there from yesterday, a real light tone. I needed a bit of white, so that saved me on the white because it's already got it out of that one. Beautiful stuff. All right. Uh, Paint on as quick as I can. No fluffing around. There we go. Those birds sound great, okay. Just kind of get it right up to the bottom. <laughs> Painting to the edges like that with a knife is not the easiest thing in the world, but that'll be alright. Okay. So kind of goes like so. Bit of a workout. Okay, so there's your yellow ochres, burnt sienna, and white, much lighter tone. Getting a general vibe of what's going on here. Well, a bit of this happening here and there. Early for now. Let's get some of that distance in. What do we got? Bit of blues from yesterday. Throw some of those greeny blues in. A sky color. <laughs> Ultramarine blue and magenta to make more of a red blue as it goes up a bit. Mix, 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 mix. We got goes there, goes there. Just trying to work out what I'm doing with a bit of draftsmanship here. That'll go there. A bit more of a brute. Ultramarine blue, magenta. This is what I'm saying about mixing colours on the site. It's got to be second nature to you. Heaps of practice will help that. Practice in the studio, practice out on site. Practice, practice. all sorts of stuff happening in this sky today because it's got a bit of cloud so I'm going 
going for. Just blending it a bit, going for a bit of variety there. Let's have a look, I'll stand back. It's kind of working, all right there. Now right on the base, down the bottom of the sky, just going to make more of a grey, so I'll put a bit more magenta in, a little bit of burnt sienna, and there all the colours on the colour will combine so it'll grey it more. Making a neutral type of grey, not too neutral. Let's have a look, I think there's a bit more blues than that in it. What do we have? That's pretty dark. That's all right, because that'll help. The darker you make that, the more the bank is going to stand out, isn't it? Everything's about contrast. And that's quite dark. You may go, whoa, what are you doing? Could be right, but I think I'm right. I think I'm okay with that. Okay, now the next thing, I'm going to mix up some of the foliage, I've already put the shadows in. The light's mainly coming from behind you guys and hitting straight onto the bank. So I've kind of got the light going this way. Which means most of the foliage is lit up. It's quite a light tone then. Yellow oak's burnt the end is ready in greens. Let's just have a look. Too far off. Maybe a bit of that blue in, sky blue, to make the foliage slightly greyer. <laughs> Always mixing it up as you go. Slightly putting it in. it's necessary. The, oh my God. Just a bit of foliage coming down here too, I just lightly put that in. Now it's all very rough at the moment so we won't get too excited about the look of the whole thing. I'll stand back and have a look. I can see something starting to form, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. Be good if that sun stayed out, it's always coming and going in it. That's the thing about plein air painting. Just clear a little bit of an area here so I can work with some beautiful warm tones, light key tones. Drop that in the bin. First, Always moving around the canvas. I can see something, I can see something. Mix up a grey in these blues. With a bit more magenta and burnt sienna, so I've got a fairly neutral grey. Just ever so lightly drop bits in. More burnt sienna and white. Magenta with that sky blue is making a nice grey, it's a little bit too purple. Stick some yellow ochre in it. White to lighten it. This is just some of the roots that are on the bank there. their basic colour. So much fun working with a big knife, I just love it. 
Absolutely. Just sticking some of those roots and things in already. Feeling the subject. A bit of yellow oak on burnt sienas and white. There's gonna put in a little bit of a trunk shape here for now. Just feeling it, not getting too carried away. Sienna and blue, get a bit of a shadow tone going. Ultramarine blue. Just kind of making a bit of a grey here. Warm it up a bit with yellow ochre. Feeling that trunk. Where does the other part of the trunk go? I think it goes this way. Yeah, can go wherever you feel like it's going to be a good composition. Open somewhere through there like that. Just give it a boost. Let's get the feel of it. What do you think about this style of painting? It's just crazy stuff in that. See to your pants, away you go. My draftsmanship. <laughs> Some more yellow acres and burnt sienas. Feeling that trunk as it goes. Spews out this way, spews out that way. Bit of cad colour got in the mix there, that won't matter with white, that'll give you more of a high key. Feel that. Greens, yellow ochres, burnt siennas. area and nice and proper. Alright. Beautiful white. White, 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 white. Cad yellow deep. So it's more like an orange. Bit of burnt sienna with that. Bit of yellow ochre to keep it an earthy tone. Cads. Beautiful high key colour. Filling it in where I reckon it should go. Oh, 
Let's have a look at that. Let me get something there. a bit of paint off there so I can blend it better. Use some of it here. Get a locus persianus. blend them a bit more at the moment with little marks to help bring them together a bit. Beautiful chunky paint. Just pulling through, wiping clean. Stand back and have a look at that. Okay. Smear a few things here and there. Soften. Softening the bank with a bit of smearing. More foliage there. Mix up a bit of a cad colour quickly. Cad red, cad yellows. To make an orange. There's just a little bit of orange, not too much. In that foliage there. What I need to do is quickly just with these light tones, the burnt sienna, white, maybe a bit more burnt sienna than that. Mix up a nice distant peachy sort of cloud colour. I get some of those lower clouds in on top of those blues there, what colour are they? They're quite rich. You can keep on going with that brown. Those distant ones down low quite often get that orange colour and burnt sienna is a great colour for that. That kind of looks like peachy colour. And that's a great way to contrast what's about to come after that, which is cleaner colours, lighter tones, either with yellow ochres or cad, something lighter and brighter, really starts to bring it closer as it goes up. Like so, not forgetting, the shadow version which is blues, magenta and burnt sienna to make it kind of grey again. Get a bit of that. Just get those greys in there. If you're all them chuffing around, you just got to work out where you want them. 
stand back or lean back. I might have some about there, I reckon. The clouds are always moving, so you can put them wherever you want. That's the way you should always think. You're always making a composition. And the beauty of working on site, I'll just smear this clean, is because it's always changing, you don't get too stuck on one thing. Like when you're working with a photo, it's so easy to just go, oh, you know, the photo's this color or it's that color. But what's happening here is it's always changing, so. You haven't got, you've got a lot more to choose from, and even if you wanted to copy, copy everything that was there, it's not gonna stay around for you, it's gonna change anyway, so. Just wiping. Just trying to blend the, blend that foliage so it's sitting better. It's not just non-convincing, it's blending with the environment. that mate, eh? let's just have a look. You always got to get back to be able to analyze something that's so broad and loose. If it's this broad and loose, you can't really tell what's going on unless you stand right back. So you can get a bit of an educated guess, but you're not really going to know, eh? softening as I go. Take some paint off there to get the grass and shit with some of that stuff. Really the marks. Come together, good, good, good. Pull that through. A variety. I feel like I'm almost dancing here, I'm just jumping around all the time. Pulling through with a knife to help soften bits and pieces. Yeah, mix up a darker tone of foliage, really in green. There's not gonna be any white because I want to keep it quite dark here. Burnt sienna, yellow ochre. You can get a lot of variety of darks. I just want to paint the shadow version of some of this stuff. Yeah, that burnt sienna, viridian green, yellow ochre, gives you all sorts, all sorts of greens, just by varying it. Get that knife clean, it's got too much green on it. I'm after a clean, warm tone now, so. Some whites, cad, Some of the light tones on the tree. I've got a knife on edge and trying to get the twist of that shape of that tree. The bark's kind of got a nice twisting, a twisting aspect about it. I 
Servus, 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 servus. I'm going to improve some of that draftsmanship in a minute. Just trying to keep working around, getting the variety. It's almost like a high tide mark here. You can see there's definitely been a high tide mark. Everything's kind of got this yellow ochre stain about it around about that height. All right, I'm going to get another knife. Slightly small, believe it or not. Okay, so, you know, a little bit small. Then I might be able to get into some of those areas I'm trying to get into. Like these beautiful areas here where you've got the trunks. The beautiful trunks. There's plenty of variety there, so you vary the angles. Some of this way, some of that way. Where the trunks are meeting the water. And there is seems to be a mirror image uh, version coming underneath. There's a bit of breeze on the water, so it's not exact mirror image that's good when there's no breeze you have to paint the reflection identical or pretty much identical to the object itself but once the breeze is up things start to change it starts to do its own variety then now that with a clean knife I'll just pull and wobble those reflections and go in like so. Wiping the knife clean. How much fun is this? Lots. Yeah, there's a strong colour. A little bit of white on that to spike it up a bit. pull through with the knife to blend things. Stand back now and have a look. See what's going on. Yeah, getting there, getting there, getting there. Bring that paint up to the edges a bit. Vary it with some nice roots and stuff. I'm sitting here, so I'm sitting there. A lot of variety in this uh, bank. That's cool. Blue. There's a beautiful clean soft shadow there like that. A little bit of magenta in it.
making some lovely cool colours. Hang on. off can quite often soften and add a lot of beautiful variety. Look how it's brought some of that underpaint, that beautiful red. Great on a lot. Pull through. Softening that shadow like you wouldn't believe. Which is important. Let's pull some of that beautiful red there too, which is great. It's really popping. When you pull back to the undertones, yeah, you quite often get those. That's why in the shadow colours, it's good to put dark, clean tones without white. You vary them. Bits of green, bits of magenta, bits of this, bits of that. And if you ever pull back to them, it comes. The canvas is actually showing through. So that red highlight there, I can actually see the canvas through it. It gives it a translucency that you can't, you can't match if you're if you put white in it. Just adding some variety here and softening and whatever. Pulling through with a knife, using that knife to its advantage, which is Fantastic for getting some energy on the surface of the water. Take a bit of paint off there. It's good to take, add, take, keep varying what you're doing. Soft. Soft. So it's really contrasting the, uh, the rest of the picture. All right, what we got next? Let's have a look. Yeah. Constantly working around the picture. That gum tree's kind of winding up into the scrub there. It'll suggest that. The knife on edge just suggests some of these beautiful branches. Some uprights there. If I can reach. Wind's died out for a minute, I don't believe it. What's good about this, uh, as you've seen before, it doesn't matter what the wind's doing, this uh, setup is fantastic for. Having the wind not affect you. Okay, I'll just mix up. As the wind's dying, there's a bit more blue becoming evident on the water. Not too much, I'll put some on. Thalo with it. Using those ochres with it. The other ochre. Then sienna and white. Mm-hmm. 
Gotta be dark on that night, a bit below her. Just adding a little bit here and there, not too much. I'll quickly stand back to analyse which way I'm going to smear it and smudge it. Just introducing a bit of blue, but not too much. A bit of breeze. It's just lightly putting it in there a little bit. Warm against cool. the knife up. You can see I'm jolting the knife up and down as I'm blending in places. Some I'm just blending straight, others I'm bouncing the knife. The idea of that is it just needs to put little ripples on the water. Get that knife. Slightly smaller knife. Just when I'll play some of these draftsmanship. Clean that up. I've got the knife on edge, drawing in some of these distant branches that are going this way and that way and whatever. Short ones, long ones. Mimicking the feeling of variety out there. I need some clean white. Some cleaner sticks and some good uprights there. bit of draftsmanship again. Okay, let's have a look at that. Just moving around the painting, pulling things in here and there. 
softening, hardening, whatever needs to be done. Variety. We fix that. Okay, get a bit of this blue. The wind is just picking up some nice highlights on the water here and there. I'm just sticking bits in. Just boldly on the knife on the edge, just pulling through. Let's have a look at that. That just, those horizontals, a great contrast. You get all the downward marks, the warmer tones, put some horizontals and bang, really jumps. It's extremely broad and abstract. I'm really liking it. There's a certain reality about it. In a beautiful abstract way. out some of those dark, little dark shadows here and there. Too many, just enough. Right, let's have another look. Beautiful blues. Contrasting there. Stand back and have a look at that. Just trying to pick out the tree so it really jumps off the, off the canvas. sort of effect. Doing some of the details in that shadow, the twigs and whatever. Sticking out and popping out. Beautifully. The wind's died out a bit now, which is good. Just so much to do in a big painting like this, and 
So much fun, of course. Look at the way that tree's gone around now as soon as I softened that edge. It's pulled it around. It's the beauty of the knife for effects like that. Just softened by pulling through it, extends the trunk. More like a trunk would be a round thing. Keep on keeping on. Just gonna stand back again. The more the painting gets finished, the more you've got to stand back and observe rather than just keep throwing the paint on. Especially when it's quite abstract. The, uh, the little abstract marks. You don't want to lose them. You want to. You want to keep the. Uh, the bones of the painting, you want to feel how it was created, you don't want to get rid of that. But still you want to finish it more, so that's the fun, isn't it? That's the fun. Getting a little stinging accent in colours there to really make them pop. Like so, they really jump in the right areas. Just got to feel where you want them. There's, already, there's a lot of white I've left with the canvas too, like little bits of white, and that's, that's great. Really gives a loose, vibrant feel. on the edge. He's got a knife on the edge. Wipe it clean. that, come on. That's it. Draw with that knife. Lovely squiggly little trunk, little thin sapling trunk to add detail. Just keep getting some beautiful little accents with cad yellow deep and white. Just feel like stinging a little bit here and there. Some little dots and lines. To help it dance around and finish it. Amazing what those little colourful finishing marks do, they can really bring the painting together. All right, well, that's about it. I reckon I've got the big impression. I could do more, but then a lot would also be lost by, by the fact that it's reality, but at the same time, it's broad and it's got life and it's got 
you can see the creation in it, you can see it's been developed, you can feel the technique and it's easy to lose that if you go too far, but at the same time you want to bring it up and finish it, so there's where you've got to play that combo. Alright, well I'm pretty happy, I feel like I've captured what I was after and that was that tree, really focusing in on that tree. Okay, so I'll get the camera off and we'll have a closer look. Alright now, if you haven't subscribed, remember, go and do that and hit that notification bell. That way you won't miss any of these videos as I upload them. And also, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it around to your mates. Alright, let's get the camera off and have a look.